Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the two type of leases, operating lease and a finance lease. In the prior session, we looked at the lease contract. We looked at lease component versus non-lease component. Now we look at leases from an accounting perspective. From an accounting perspective, we must account for a lease as either an operating lease or a finance lease. In this session, we need to explain when is a lease is an operating lease? When is a finance lease? What is an operating lease? What is a finance lease? This classification, either an operating or a finance lease, will influence how the lease is recorded in the lessee financial statement subsequent to the initial recording. Why subsequent to the initial recording? Because in the initial recording, we are going to see in the initial recording, both operating lease and finance lease are treated the same. How they differ is subsequent to the initial recording. We'll worry about the accounting later. All what we do in this session is determine whether a lease is an operating lease or a finance lease. Now, what criteria do we take into account? I'm gonna list the criteria now very generally, then we will discuss them later. What factors do we involve? Well, we involve the lease term. How long is the lease term relative to the asset life? Whether the lessee gains ownership at the end of the lease, is the ownership transfer to the lessee at the end of the lease? Is there an option purchase, a bargain purchase price for that matter? Not only any purchase option, a bargain purchase option. Don't worry, we'll explain each one of them separately. We would look at the present value of the lease payment and we would look at how specific the asset is to the lessee's need. So those are the factors. Now, how do we account for these factors? This is what we will discuss separately. So those are the factors that influence whether a lease will be an operating lease or a finance lease. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. What is the difference between an operating lease and a finance lease? An operating lease is treated more like a rental agreement. The agreement is treated as if, it's, if we have a rental agreement. And this approach is typically used when there's no transfer of the ownership and benefit to the lessee. It's, it's a rental. You rent the apartment. If you have an apartment building, then you move, you leave, and you, you have no ownership. A lease is treated if, as a, as, a, as a finance lease, if the lessee has bought the asset using the loan. Here, this method is used when the lease agreement transfer most of the ownership as well as risk and benefit, effectively making the lessee the de facto owner of the asset. So this is the difference between the two. An operating is like a rental agreement, a finance lease as if you bought the asset using a loan. Now, what are the criteria? There are five criteria that we have to review and look in details in order to determine whether a lease is a finance lease or an operating lease. And we do this at the beginning of the lease, at the inception of the lease, and the criteria is for both lessee and the lessor. So what we have to do is look at these criteria that essentially determine whether the lease is practically take the lessee take over control of the asset being leased, which is a finance lease, or they don't. Now, the good thing is, as I mentioned, both the lessor and the lessee uses the same criteria. Now, we're going to look at five criteria. All what we have to do is meet one out of five, just one. So we're going to look at the criteria. Well, first criteria is transfer of ownership. Does the lease leads to the lessee owning the asset at the end of the lease period? What does that mean? It means in the contract, in the lease, do we state that at the end of this lease, the ownership of this asset, building, vehicle, equipment, the ownership is transferred to the lessee. If the ownership is transferred to the lessee, we have a finance lease. And this is easy to determine because this information can be found in the lease itself. Well, that's, that's criteria one. If that criteria is available, we have a finance lease. Criteria two, 
is there a purchase option specifically a bargain bargain mean really really good price the lease include a clause a section that allows the lessee to buy the asset and it's highly likely the lessee will use this option basically someone will be i'm going to use the word not very smart not to take this option for example let's assume at the end of the lease life we estimate the value of this vehicle to be twenty thousand and the lessee can buy it for a thousand dollars come on no one's gonna pass this offer if the fair value it'd be twenty thousand and they're telling you you pay a thousand and you take it you have a purchase option you have specifically a bargain a bargain purchase that no one is going to is going to skip over also this information can be found in the lease so that's easy to determine based on the transfer of ownership or the bargain purchase bargain per a bargain purchase option whether the lease is a finance lease or a an operating lease any of them available in the lease we have a finance lease this is two out of five the third criteria is the lease payment value we look at the we look at the payment and if we see that all lease payment the total of all lease payment along with the amount the lessee guarantees to pay for the asset value at the end of the lease which is the residual value and if this amount is almost as much or more than the asset current worth then technically what that technically the lessee is buying the asset when evaluating whether the present value of the lease payment constitutes substantially all this is what we look at do the payments constitute substantially all the asset fair value How, what do we do we're going to look at the payment find the present value and if the present value is greater than 90 percent of the asset fair value technically we bought the asset this means if the present value of the lease payment equal or two equal to or greater than 90 percent of the of the asset fair value we purchase this asset technically it's a finance lease let's look at an example to illustrate this concept because substantially all means 90 percent of the fair of the present value of the payment let's assume an entity enters a lease for equipment that has a fair value of thirty five thousand. so if we pay it today we pay thirty five thousand. annual lease payment are ten thousand are to be made every year on december 31st the duration of the lease is four years while the total expected life of the equipment is 10 years the entity's incremental borrowing rate stands at 10 percent well this lease arrangement does not include a transfer of ownership so we failed the first test there is no option for the entity to purchase the equipment we failed the second test remember transfer of ownership or a bargain purchase it's not only any purchase a bargain purchase and the equipment is not considered to be specialized we'll look at that later now what do we have to do now we have to figure out how much how many payments are we making we're making four payments of ten thousand so we're making four payments this sounds like an annuity what do we do we are going to discount this annuity to the present value so if we take ten thousand times the present value of annuity factor 3.17 here what we're looking at n equal to 10 uh, n equal to 4 and i equal to 10 percent now if you don't know the present value factor you want to go back and view the time value of money i'm going to assume you're comfortable with that otherwise go to farhat lectures to look at the time value lessons so the present value of the payment is thirty one thousand seven hundred. the fair value is 35 well let's see what's 90 percent of the fair value 90 percent of the fair value is thirty one thousand five hundred. look your payment discounted at present value are more than 90 percent of the fair value of the asset you purchase this asset technically not technically this is a finance lease because when we discounted the payment the payment discounted represent more than 90 percent it has to be 90 or more than the fair value of the asset 90 percent of the fair value of the asset this is a finance lease the fourth criteria is the lease duration how long is this lease the length of the lease cover most of the asset remaining useful life now what is most of the asset remaining useful life if the lease covers specifically 75 percent or more then we we say that this lease cover most of the asset remaining useful life what does that mean it means you have control over the asset for most of the life of this asset it means if that's the case you have a finance lease remember this is the fourth condition all what you need is meet one condition let's look at an example 
Same example, except the duration of the lease that we looked at earlier is eight rather than ten, rather than four. In the prior example, we said duration of the lease is four years. If we change this duration to eight, well, if we have the asset eight out of 10 years of its life, we have this asset 80% of its life, you met the fourth condition, which is the lease duration. What does that mean? It means we have a finance lease at our hand. Now, sometimes you could have more than one, you could meet more than one condition. For example, in this example, you met the lease life and you met, you met the present value payment. You just have to meet one to be a finance lease. Again, the duration is one. The fifth, the fifth option is asset specialization. The asset has to be that of a specialized nature where the lessor cannot use it for anything else. They cannot release it. So the asset is so specialized that once the lease is over, the lessor cannot expect to use it for anything else. So simply put, the asset is so specialized to this customer. Well, well, if the asset is so specialized, technically they purchased it. So the asset specialization and lease classification consider whether the leased asset is so uniquely designed or adapted for a specific purpose that once the lease ends, the lessor cannot reasonably be able to lease it to another party or use it for an alternative use because the asset is so, is so specific to that client. This typically involves what? Assets that are custom made or have unique features that cater specifically to the lessee's operational need. Now, an example would be, basically they can tell you the equipment is considered to be specialized. If they see in the example, the equipment is considered, it's considered to be specialized, that's all what they have to say. You are looking at the finance lease. Let's summarize what we just did. If none of the conditions or criteria apply, then the lease is treated as an operating lease by the lessee. What are these five criteria? One is ownership transfer. If there's no ownership transfer at the end of the lease, we don't have a finance lease for the lessee. If there's no bargain purchase, we don't have a finance lease. If the present value of the lease payment are 90% or more, if not, we don't have a lease. Uh, we don't have a finance lease. Four. The lease is 75% of the asset life. If the answer is no, it's not. It's less than that. We don't have a finance lease. We're not dealing with a specialized asset. We don't have a finance lease. If we fail all these conditions, all what we need is one yes. One yes will give us a finance lease. Five no's will give us an operating lease. Or if the lease is short term, then it's an operating lease. We're okay with that. Let's take a look at another example to illustrate this concept. Let's assume Irving Company enters into a lease agreement with a green company providing specialized industrial machinery for a term of 12 years, commencing January 1st, X3. The machinery have an economic life of 15. The present value of, of the anticipated lease payment along with the residual value is calculated to be 85% of the machinery fair value. We already know right here, we failed the present value of the payment because it's 85%. At the conclusion of the lease, ownership of the machinery does not transfer to green. We failed number one. We failed also ownership transfer. That's failed. We already failed two tests. Nor does green retain the option to purchase the equipment. <laughs> well, we failed number two or another, the bargain purchase. So we already failed the ownership test, the bargain, and the present value. Now, the lease term is 12. The economic life is 15. Well. Take 12 divided by 15. Is it more than 75%? If the answer is yes, we have a finance lease. We're, and this is providing non-specialized industrial machinery and the asset is not specialized. So all we have to do is determine whether this a finance or an operating lease is meet one criteria. And the only criteria we met is the lease term, which is more than 80%. We, fa we, we, we failed the transfer of ownership we feel the purchase option, we feel the present value, and it's not an asset of a specialized nature. That was all given in the problem. Just have to know that we met the lease term. Let's take a look at this multiple choice questions by FarhatLectures.com. Which of the following criteria would classify a lease as a finance lease? The lease term is less than 75% of the asset economic life. No, it has to be more. That's out. The lessee has a significant incentive to purchase the asset at the end of the lease term. Well, looks like here, like incentive means it have some sort of a, some good deal, significant deal. I would say I would hold to be. 
The asset is a generic office building with multiple potential assets. A generic office building, it's not a specialized nature, and they're telling you the exact opposite of a specialized generic. Out. The lease payments are less than 90% of the asset fair value. Well, the lease payment without the present value is even less than 90%, so the present value, they're going to be even less. D is out because you have to compute the present value of the lease payment. All in all, what we can say is B was the correct answer. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs. That's going to help you, whether you're studying for your CPA exam, accounting courses, some, agile, some other professional certification. Invest in yourself. Good luck. Study hard and, of course, stay safe.